In Iraq, where at least three people have died as demonstrators march in a number of cities across the country to protest against corruption and a lack of jobs and services, security forces used tear gas and stun grenades to push protesters back. The protests began hours after Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi promised to reshuffle his cabinet and introduce sweeping reforms. We plan to reduce the salaries of officials in the presidential offices and ministries, as well as members of parliament and executive managers of national public entities. The funds derived from the reduction of salaries, along with contributions from the state, will be used to establish a social welfare fund that ensures that no Iraqi lives below the poverty line, and that any Iraqi without income will receive a monthly grant of no less than 110 US dollars. The Council of Ministers will submit the draft law to the House of Representatives for approval. A correspondent, Natasha Ghanem, is joining us live from the Iraqi capital now. And as we've been reporting, Natasha, three protesters killed, more than 100 injured. What is the situation there? Well, we have actually moved to a side street from Tahrir Square because the crew decided that it had, it had just become too dangerous. I want you to take a look, though, that some of the protesters who have followed us, mostly men in these protests, primarily young. And this is the majority, by the way, uh, young people are of the population of Iraq. They are out on the streets protesting as part of a second wave of protests that began in October because they're fed up with the lack of economic opportunities here in the country. They're fed up with the unreliable basic services such as clean water and electricity. And they say this government is dysfunctional and corrupt and they want it out. Unfortunately, based on yet another round of reforms, that the Prime Minister Adil Abdel Mahdi announced overnight. It appears that the government will not be resigning. And people are telling us that this is unacceptable. One man told us that we voted for these people. We elected these people, and yet we have no dignity. Now, this is the one-year anniversary of Prime Minister Adil Abdel Mahdi uh, becoming Prime Minister, and I'm sure it's not quite the milestone uh, he'd hoped to be marking today. He is embattled. It's been a series of uh, reforms announced by the government. It includes slashing the salaries of the prime minister, the president, and other top officials um, uh, in half. And then the uh, hope was to divert this money to a kind of social welfare account to help the poor. He's announced an anti-corruption uh, formation investigation. But here's the thing. This anger today is fueled by the fact that in the first wave of protests in October, 149 protesters were killed. There were reports that there were snipers on top of buildings shooting at protesters. The government and the military are now acknowledging that excessive force was used. Seven commanders were relieved of their duty. Their cases are being turned over to the judiciary, and they may face criminal charges. The government is vowing that those people will be held to account. But again, there's a sense among the people we're talking to today that we've heard this before, that it's a kind of lip service. And what they really want is a new government that they hope will finally be responsive to their needs. One man said it's been 16 years, government after government, making empty promises, and we want change and we want it now. The other thing that's worth noting is that there is a real desire for Iraq to be its own person, if you will, or own country in charge of its own destiny. People are angry over what they see as an outsized influence by Iran and the United States. They want no more foreign meddling. And Natasha, it is such a delicate situation now because, as you mentioned, the protests have been inflamed by the fact that 150 protesters have been killed so far this month. So how does the government go about handling the current protests? We've already heard of three people killed so far just today. Right, and uh, about 69 overcome uh, with tear gas. Take a look here. So these are the tear, tear gas canisters that people are showing us that have injured people. This man was uh, injured. I saw a very disturbing video a short time ago of a man's head smoking an open wound from ostensibly one of these tear gas canisters. The day began with the prime minister saying that people's right to protest would be respected as long as, quote, they did not disrupt public life. But as you can see, things have deteriorated. People are injured and the anger is only growing. And here's another thing.
thing. These protests were not supposed to start until well after Friday prayers, about 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And a new element in uh, today's protest is that followers of uh, the Shia cleric Muqtada El Sadr were joining the pre protest in full force. They were actually going to have what they were calling peace brigades without weapons to try to protect uh, protesters. So it'll be very interesting to see in the coming hours just how many more people uh, come to the streets. But I can tell you that it's been a tense morning so far and people are angry. Natasha, Sorry, thank you. Like we're running another round of tear gas. No problem, Natasha. Thank you very much for that. The sound of stun grenades reverberated around Tahrir Square in Baghdad on Friday. Dozens of protesters were overcome by clouds of tear gas. They chanted, free Baghdad, corrupt officials out. From Iraq's capital to the southern city of Karbala, Iraqis demanded the resignation of Prime Minister Adil Abdel Mahdi and his government. They are not men of state. That's all. They cannot do anything. They cannot manage a, little, a very little school. Not this, the country with this. The nationwide protests were on the first anniversary of Mahdi taking office. They're also a continuation of protests, which began at the beginning of the month, that have killed 149 civilians and eight members of the security forces. The government acknowledges excessive force was used. They call it a democracy, but the hands they use to wield this democracy are dictators. When they kill their people with snipers, it's not democracy. In addition to promising to punish those responsible for killing protesters, Mehdi announced that he and other government leaders will cut their salaries by half and divert the money to a fund to help the poor. He's also vowing to reshuffle the government next week prioritizing qualifications before party or sect. For years we heard about reforms. It's just a sleeping pill to calm the people. All of us are rejecting this corrupt government. Protesters are primarily young men, desperate for jobs they can't find, in a country where the gap between rich and poor only seems to grow. I'm jobless. I have 24 cents. Let all the television stations see me. This is all I have. Protesters say they want to live in an independent Iraq, not one that's a puppet of the United States and Iran. The office of an Iranian-backed armed group was torched in the southern city of Samawa. The prime minister says if the government resigns now, chaos will follow. Protesters remain unmoved. They say the solution is for a new government to take over. Natasha Ganem, Al Jazeera, Baghdad.